All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about before we actually give you on-field examples is the basic template in season that we would recommend using um, to re either reinforce good movements that are happening or try to figure out, uh, identify why a player might not be performing up to his potential, okay? So every swing has three major components to it, okay? We have the launch part of the swing, which is the final piece, okay? So where we land, all right? We wanna make sure the important part about the launch are these three factors, okay? First of all, you wanna make sure they're in a good position, all right? Are they in a, a position where they can explode where they want? Is there balance? Are they landing in a good spot to really get things going, okay? Next thing we wanna make sure is that they're turning from the right spot, okay? This is the same thing as direction, which we'll talk about later, okay? So if they're getting to the right position, they're turning from their shoulders, that's gonna affect their direction. We don't want that. We wanna turn from the middle of our body, okay? This is not a hitting opinion. This has been measured by people way smarter than us. It's an, uh, an anatomy thing, it's a scientific fact. If we're moving from the middle, that's where we're gonna be most efficient, and we're gonna maintain our direction, and then also posture and tilt, okay? We'll get into this big time during our realistic training uh, segment of this, but at the end of the day, every pitch we're ever gonna face is doing two things. The ball's going down and it's coming at an angle, okay? No righty, no lefty, throws hook shots. So ba based on righty, lefty, the ball's coming out from an angle and it's going down. The average major league release height, six foot. Catcher catches it about a foot, foot and a half. Uh, pretty simple, the ball's going down. So if I'm standing straight up, that's not matching that angle, okay? We wanna make sure as we're doing these drills from a launch position, we're turning from the right thing and we're keeping our tilt. Cool? Next up, we got the load, all right? During the load portion, we're gonna give you three different drills that we recommend using based on what the hitter may be doing wrong, his needs, uh, the correct fix. I, I recommend trying all three because you're gonna understand that, or you're gonna see that hitters are gonna gravitate towards one that helps them feel uh, what we need to feel the most. But the basic two things in our load drills, we're trying to reinforce getting into our back hip, not our quad, okay? We'll go over this a ton, but the quad is the enemy of any lower half in a hitter, okay? The quad is a push muscle. Once again, not a hitting opinion. It's an anatomy fact, okay? If I load into that push muscle, I'm gonna be able to do one of two things, either push or I have to shut it down. And once I shut it down, I can't use it. Now I'm gonna spin with my upper half, uh, with my shoulders, and then that really affects our direction. So as we're going through these three drills, we wanna feel it in our back hip, our back butt cheek, and we want to feel a controlled forward move, regardless of which drill you're doing. Finally, our live, all right? This is regular swings, but it wouldn't be the three L's if it started with an R, so I use the word live, okay? During live, we want to minimize our mechanical thoughts, okay? We want to fake like we're in a game here, okay? And in a game, we should be focused on our timing, tempo, direction, okay? So what I mean by tempo is, most kids, players, even when you go to the collegiate pro level, they're training at different speeds throughout each uh, timing mechanism, whatever you want to use, that they're facing. In other words, when they get on the tee, they're moving a certain way. Then that changes when they go to short toss, and then it really changes once they're off the machine. We need to reinforce the correct tempo moving at the same speed from launch to when we, lit, to when we make contact, whether we're throwing med balls, whether we're on a tee, whether we're facing soft toss or facing machine. So if you just throw mechanics out the window and you just focus on just moving at the same speeds, you're gonna see instant results because most guys are facing or moving in a game a way they've never moved in practice. So it's like taking a test you've never studied for versus if we can keep the same tempo in each one of our drill sets, that's gonna immediately give us more positive results. The other reason I recommend using this style, at least at first, and there's no one size fits all, everybody's different. You're gonna have to make adjustments based on the hitter you're training. But this allows us to really diagnose three aspects of the swing, and it can really help us figure out where the hitter is struggling or have a, put a magnifying glass on that swing and really figure out where we need to put most of our energy and why they might not be producing in game, okay? So if we start at a launch position and they don't have a good launch position, you're just flipping to them without a load, one, they're not gonna be able to explode the right when they decide to swing, they're not gonna have the right turn, all that kind of mechanical stuff. But also, if they're not in a, the right launch position, they don't know where they need to go. So in other words, they're never gonna be on time. So the two aspects of the launch that are really important is, is it a strong position and do they know where it is so that they know where to get to before they can swing? So if you flip to a hitter, his launch position's off, that's where you need to start.
okay? That's step one. But if he's at a strong launch position and he has all those aspects working for him, then we can eliminate this off our checklist of what's happening. Then you go to the load, okay? If his load's all jacked up, if he's getting into his quad or he's sitting on his back leg, he doesn't have the right weight distribution, then you know that's where we need to spend our energy. We need to work on, okay, we need to load to the right area so we can be under control, get a forward move, and get to this strong launch position, okay? So in other words, if the load isn't getting them there, that's where we need to spend our energy, all right? If they check these two boxes, then we go to live, all right? Are they moving at the same tempo? Do they have good direction? All that kind of stuff to make sure that's translating. And if you can check all these three boxes, then it's not mechanical, all right? It's either approach or pitch selection. All right, I think this aspect of training in general, but especially in season, is by far the most important, okay? I think very few people um, train realistically. The example I always use is, Baseball is already the hardest thing to do in sports, and it becomes even harder if you're practicing all week on an eight-foot hoop, and then your game's ten foot. In the, in the game, we're shooting at a ten-foot hoop. A basketball reference for you, but for us right now, we need to make sure that what we're doing is actually translating to the game. Okay, and I think even coaches we're guilty of this sometimes because hitting's hard. This style of training is hard, and we want our hitters to be comfortable. We don't necessarily always want that confrontation of they're failing, they're failing, they're failing, and we're trying to figure out what's wrong, but it's not comfortable for us, it's not comfortable for them. It is much more comfortable just to shoot, uh, flip short toss, watch them mash, but I always use the example, as a coach or a player, you can either be comfortable in the cage or you can be comfortable in the game. You can't be comfortable in both, okay? If the major league batting average right now is 220 and our guys are hitting 800 in practice, we're not doing everything right, okay? So the aspects that I think are important for realistic training that are make practice much harder but prepare, prepare us better for the game, first we're gonna start off with, with reaction time, okay? We gotta have consistent reaction times to game, okay? T, short toss, slow BP, isn't gonna cut it. And the simple way you can do this, Google baseball pitch speed conversion. All right, I use the pocket radar one. Personally, um, not name dropping here, but one of my good friends, the hitting coordinator for the Yankees, that's what they use, that's why I'm using it. Uh, it gives you a ton of different feet, pitch speeds from each one. Get a pocket radar, borrow one of our radar guns in here, make sure that you're hitting at realistic pitch speeds, okay? Because if not, you could be thinking you're fixing your swing, you're hitting line drives, but if it's not off a realistic reaction time, you actually are probably reinforcing bad movement patterns, okay? To go along with that, the next thing I wanna talk about a realistic, spin rate and angles, okay? Almost none of us do this, all right? And I've been guilty of this in the past too, but if you're hitting off the machine especially, okay? You can really jack up a hitter's swing if it's not, you don't have the right parameters set up um, from a distance standpoint and an angle standpoint. I see guys all the time with our little machine going back to the cage, all right? So now you're shooting a ball from four feet that's ending at a foot target, two foot target. That's basically having our guys practice hitting Jenny Finch, an underhand softball pitch. So as a hitter, you want to see good results. So you can actually be changing your swing to hit an unrealistic machine, and now nobody's getting what they want. They're not going to hit it right because it's not an angle they're used to. They're getting frustrated. You're getting frustrated. But in reality, it's just the parameters that we've set up. All right, so we're going to talk about the correct parameters here in a second. But the other thing is, if you're setting the machine straight on, even if it is the right spin rate, the right distance, that's not completely realistic either because we're gonna go over this later, no pitch ever is going straight, all right? No one throws hook shots, so they're coming at an angle. All right, so we're gonna show you exactly how we set it up to make sure that we have the most realistic parameters around our machine work as possible, okay? So we've used TrackMan, Rapsodo to measure the spin rate. It's never gonna be exactly what they're gonna face in the game, but we're gonna show you the way that we've gotten closest to make it most realistic, okay? And then from just an overall standpoint, okay, like any drill, we need to make sure that we're reinforcing the right bat path, okay? T, short toss, I'm not telling you not to use them, okay, because sometimes that's all hitters have, but we're gonna show you more realistic ways to use the T and use short toss because the traditional way is reinforcing bad habits, okay? You can take terrible swings off the T that have a good result, short toss, doesn't have either of these things we're talking about, all right? It's not the right angle, straight on, and it's not 
the right downward angle. So you're talking flat and straight. That does nothing to help us prepare for a game. So we're gonna go over stuff that we do like, angle toss, firm BP, machine. We're gonna teach you how to set it up the right way. So at the end of the day, one of the most important things we can do for our hitters is not try to make them comfortable, but give them realistic training environment so that what they do in practice is gonna translate to the game. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the launch drill of our med ball toss, all right? I'm a huge proponent of the med ball, especially for guys in younger ages, because um, most guys just jump on the tee, take eight swings to get loose. In reality, one, that's not helping your swing. Two, it's not getting you loose. So what the med ball does with us, not only does it reinforce the right mechanics, right patterns, but also when you add some weight, you're getting good uh, use of your rotational muscles. You're gonna end up adding bat speed, okay? So the launch drill we wanna do, all right? We're gonna just go to our launch position with the ball behind us, all right? Underhand is where we wanna go. If we get up here, they start using too much of their shoulders, so we're gonna go underhand. Now the two big proponents of any launch drill, especially when we're throwing the med, bill, med ball, is the cues are, we wanna keep our head still, maintain our posture, and we wanna turn from the middle. We wanna use the middle of our body. We don't wanna use the top to spin, okay? So we're gonna come here, no load, just feel a turn, boom, hold it, okay? So if you go from behind, the big thing, you wanna go from behind me, Steph? When you're watching from behind, the big thing you wanna make sure is, and it goes hand in hand, when they turn from the middle, they're gonna be able to keep that posture in this natural tilt, all right? I've been doing this for a long time. The only thing I've seen that every major league hitter does, and if you don't believe me, go home, go YouTube any hitter you've ever seen and home run after their name, see it from the pitcher's view. When they make contact, they have this lateral tilt. Okay, I call it lateral tilt. And the simple explanation is every pitch we ever face has two things in common, whether you're nine or in the big leagues. The ball's going down at an angle, okay? The ball will never be going up, no one throws hook shots. So if I'm standing straight up and using my shoulders, now I'm not matching the angle of the pitch. So when you're watching from that angle, you wanna pay attention to their tilt and what they're using, okay? So from this angle, if you start seeing this, that's no bueno, all right? What we wanna see is that posture maintained and a nice strong finish like that. All right, we're gonna move on to our load uh, circuit. I'm gonna give you three different drills, okay? The first thing we need to understand is when we're coaching hitting, I like to think about absolutes and I like to take opinions out of it, okay? So what we're working on in a low drill is getting into our back hip and controlling our forward move. All right, that's not my hitting opinion, that's anatomy, okay? Most kids, you'll see when they start doing this, you're gonna see them get into their quad, all right? When they load back, they have this move where they're really sitting back into that. Now the issue there is, from an anatomy standpoint, is your quad, just like most of your front part of your body is a push muscle, all right? So if I load into my quad while I'm doing this, I have two choices, push or kill it and spin. Neither of those are what we want. So all these drills are designed to get in our back hip, our glute, and if you Google the definition of glute, it is literally made to rotate our back hip. So we wanna feel everything in the back and these are what these drills are designed. I'm gonna give you three different drills for three different common issues I see. The first one we're gonna talk about is hook em drill, okay? You're gonna take your front foot, put it over your back foot, so they can preset that feeling in their back hip, back butt cheek, all right? This is for your guy that either has trouble feeling in his back hip or has potential to sit on his back leg that can't really get that nice forward move. So what we're gonna feel here is come here and everything from the launch drills apply. We're still turning from the middle, keeping our posture, but now we're adding in the feeling of a controlled forward move. So I'm gonna be here, control, control, let it eat. Cool? So that's drill number one. Next drill, step back drill. And I'm sure these are drills we all use on a regular basis but just gonna go into them a little bit deeper, okay? So the step back drill, we're actually gonna take a step back and feel that into your back butt cheek. This is for the guy that either has trouble leaking to the front side or needs to feel some sort of backward movement. Needs to feel like he's going back before he goes forward. A lot of guys can just go forward, but some guys need to feel like they're going back or like I said, the guy that ends up on his front foot. So what we're gonna feel here is as we swing back, we're gonna step back. Now be careful when you're coaching, we don't want the weight to sway, all right? Because then we end up having to go back, forward, then turn at the right time versus keeping that knee inside that back foot and getting into a nice coil position. So it'll look like this, step back, let it eat with good posture, okay? So, so far we got the hook em, the step back, all right? 
The last one is an extreme open drill. This is for the guy that has trouble feeling that internal rotation of our hips, okay? And once again, we wanna talk in absolutes, all right? This is measured, it's not my opinion. Every major league in the world internally rotates their hips as they move forward, okay? You'll never see a guy hit like this, so we need to be able to feel that internal rotation get into our glute, okay? So we're gonna start open big time because now this kind of just forces the envelope or it forces them to do exactly what we want. So when I start like this, I have to feel that internal rotation. So I'm gonna start here, get into that back hip, let it eat. Those are the load series, boys. Now we're gonna move on to the live portion, okay? You could say regular, but then it would mess up the three L's. That's the only reason I said live. Launch, load, live, okay? Now, in our regular swing, especially we're in season, okay? We wanna think about very little mechanically and try to turn this into a game style thought, okay? So one of the biggest issues I see with young hitters especially is they have a different tempo, how they move from med ball, T, short toss, machine. It usually speeds up at all phases. Now the issue with that is if I'm using a different tempo on each of these different drill sets, then in the game, I'm taking a test I've never studied for, okay? So I'm using different tempos that I'm never practicing the same swing. So what we wanna do with the med ball is not only reinforce the bat speed component, the turning from the middle, we wanna make sure we're moving at a similar tempo. So I use a three count. So what I mean by that is when we're swinging a live bat, from the time I lift to the time I hit, anywhere from one to three is good. Most guys are gonna be one to two. If you have a guy that's moving way too quickly, you might wanna go on the three end. So right here, for me, I'm a two count hitter. By, by the time I lift to the time of contact, I want to be around 2 1,000. For me personally, everyone's a little different. So when I'm throwing, I want to feel 1 1,000, 2 1,000, have the release on 2 1,000, okay? So when I come here, I'm not necessarily thinking about mechanics. I'm getting my setup. I'm trying to visualize the pitcher. And by the time I lift, I want to feel 1 1,000, 2 1,000, release. So then when I go to the T, it's 1 1,000, 2 1,000, release. Short toss, machine, game, you get the idea. That way, I'm practicing the same movement patterns, the same timing, regardless of what I'm facing. All right, so here's an example of how we want to set up the machine, okay? Now, for younger ages, you'll have to figure this out on your own. This is for 60 feet, six inches, okay? So high school players um, and above, uh, it, everything I'm about to say uh, translates to shorter distances. Uh, I just don't know the exact parameters because most of the guys I train are in high school, a little older. This is the one that uh, we've done the most research on, okay? So I have a simple laser pointer, all right? What we want to figure out is the average major league release height is about six foot. Release distance is about 55, 54, 55 feet. So what I mean by that is the stride length of the major league pitcher, which is going to translate to high school and college for the most part, is about five to six feet. And they're releasing it about a foot, foot and a half to the side. So all we're going to do is do a traditional laser pointer. You see it here, all right? Right here, I'm six foot, a little taller than six foot. I'm where the average release is. I'm gonna put it right here on my head and go right to home plate, right down the middle, all right? So where we found out the intersection point is perfect with this tall machine is at 39 feet, okay? So then you go and you use the Google pitch speed conversion, all right, to figure out from 39 feet, where do I need, what mile per hour do I need to be to have the right reaction time? For example, for us, my college guys, we train at 62 miles an hour. It's a 92 mile an hour fastball. My high school guys, we probably train more in the 57 mile an hour range. Now you're looking at about 88, all right? So that's just an example, but you can do all that research on yourself. But we've tested this on Rapsodo, TrackMan. This is where you're gonna get your most realistic angle, height, and spin rate that we possibly can do off the machine. All right, so now we're gonna get into a bat path portion of this, okay? Our drills have to reinforce the correct bat path. Bat path is so important for everything, especially timing. The longer we're in the zone, the more opportunities we have a chance to get a hit. So most, almost everybody I see come in here does the same three things. They go off tee, short toss, and their dad throws in BP, or their buddy's throwing BP, none of which reinforces the correct bat path, all right? So I'm gonna give you another drill. This one I took from the Yankees. They hired a astrophysicist paid them a lot more money uh, than I'll ever make in my life to uh, give them what drills are the correct angles that reinforce the right bat path in the game. And the one he came out with that by far the most realistic 
drill confinements is side toss straight into a hitter, all right? We got one of our BJE alums, Brooks Tom, plays at Adrian. He's gonna help us demonstrate this, okay? So when I throw from this angle, all right, Brooks has to be right, okay? Or he's gonna flare it or roll over. I call this tightrope training. If you've ever seen a guy walk on a tightrope, if they're slightly off, they're gonna fall, all right? Same thing with this. If he's not perfect, then he's not gonna be able to hit the ball with backspin to the center, to center field. All right, we're gonna get a little closer. We're gonna demonstrate, okay? So if Brooks, I threw the ball in, Brooks, show me the right bat path. So if we're coming here and he's here, he's gonna have a chance to drive it to the middle of the field. If he's here, if he comes to the zone downhill, he's gonna roll over. If he comes in too steep, he's gonna flare it to right field, okay? So not only does this drill help the hitter feel the realistic bat path, it helps you as a coach makes your life pretty easy. If he's downhill, uh, it's gonna go to the left. If he's uphill, it's gonna go to the right. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples with Brooks here, all right? You wanna to try to throw it right into the front hip. Just give him nice, firm, let him hit it up the middle. So right there, Brooks is too uphill. He's to level out a little bit. He does that, much better result. Again. Good. So now he knows he needs an adjustment, and this is hard, it's not easy. Much better, all right? So in other words, we want to make sure our practice is translating, all right? So Brooks just saw right away he had two good results and two flares. He knows that the one up the middle is how he should feel so he can reinforce it. All right, so I'm not a huge fan of the T, all right? Why? Because it doesn't check any of the boxes I need for realistic training. It's not the right angle. It's obviously not the right speed. It's not moving. And there is no spin rate on it, okay? So once again, baseball players are a creature of habit. We want to have good results. So if you try to get good results off something that's not realistic, then you can really do damage. So I'm about to take a terrible swing. This is why the T can be deceiving. I'm literally just gonna go like this. I'm just gonna spin as fast as I can, all right? But if I set up the right way, I'm gonna get a good result. If I just come in here like this, all I'm gonna do is spin. I'm gonna be able to hit some juice onto that ball and you're gonna see a good fly up the middle. It's not a good swing, all right? So I can spend all day practicing off the T, think I have a good swing, in reality, it's not doing what I want. So an easy way to at least make this, because the other part is you can't just tell kids not to hit off the tee. Sometimes that's all they have. So another thing I do to make life a little easier is make it a little bit more realistic is I'll put a ball underneath this like this, okay? So now at least you're getting a realistic angle. So now when I throw a regular ball on the tee, now we at least have one of the components we need from realistic training. We have the right angle, all right? It's not a reaction time, it's not the right spin, but it's the right angle. So it's gonna force me to get here, feel the right path to get up through the baseball, and it's gonna at least let me know that my swing is traveling on the right angle to the baseball.